Richard Wool flexible endoscopes are small masterpieces of precision engineering. Richard Wolf manufactures two basic models of flexible endoscopes, a single channel and a dual channel endoscope. Both the single and dual channel endoscopes include a deflecting distal tip, a flexible shaft, an eyepiece, and additional ports and adapters. These instruments require specific care, handling, and reprocessing procedures to ensure they are always ready for the next patient. The facility staff in the patient care areas and Central Sterile and Supply Department, or CSSD, require thorough education for the proper care and handling of flexible endoscopes. In treating patients today, every single individual who is responsible for taking care of that patient in any manner, shape, or form is an integral part of that team. The CSSD technician is responsible to provide the tools and equipment that that surgical team needs because without that equipment, they can't function. I've had a long career and over my career there's been tremendous change in what's happening in sterile processing and in the operating room, but there are still a lot of areas where there's additional education and reinforcement of that education that's needed. By the nature of the design of flexible scopes, they are the most challenging devices to clean. And we wind up with a device that is not properly cleaned, disinfected, or sterilized for the patient. This can result in a severe infection to the patient, which is not acceptable. Richard Wolf is dedicated to giving you the information that you need to have the confidence to clean the endoscope so that your patient is well cared for in a safe manner. If we do not properly clean inside of all the channels, all the nooks and crannies, debris can actually be hiding in there, and then the sterilant or the high-level disinfectant is not going to be able to get into those locations, and we don't want to get these soils any opportunity to start to dry because then uh, the challenges for cleaning uh, go up incrementally. So the pre-cleaning is very, very critical. It has to be done immediately at the bedside. This is the one time when it is done in the room. This is not considered cleaning the scope. It's pre-cleaning. Pre-clean the endoscope at the point of use immediately after the procedure to loosen and remove debris in the channels and on the endoscope. Always use a low-pressure water pistol or 20cc syringe when flushing or rinsing the endoscope's channel. Flush the channels with either sterile or tap water, or if possible, an enzymatic solution to loosen the debris. Wipe the handle and the flexible shaft with a lint-free cloth moistened with enzymatic detergent. Check the endoscope for any holes or dents in the covering. Always report any malfunctions to CSSD so the endoscope can be sent for inspection and possible repair. Rinse the scope and channels with either sterile or tap water and secure in a transport bag or enclosed tray to prevent cross-contamination during transport to CSSD. Transport the scope to the CSSD. The first step that CSSD will take before they reprocess the endoscope is to make sure that the endoscope has no leaks. And so to do that, you need to perform a leak test. To perform a leakage test, connect the locking collar of the leakage tester tube onto the scope's pressure equalization connector. Close the knurled screw on the leakage tester. Inflate air into the endoscope using the rubber bulb until the needle is in the green range, 100 to 200 millimeters of mercury. Wait 30 seconds. If there is no drop of the needle from the green zone, the scope is safe to reprocess. Release the pressure within the scope by opening the knurled screw on the leakage tester. Wait 20 seconds to ensure all of the air is out of the scope. Remove the leakage tester from the scope's pressure equalization connector. Spray or wipe the pressure gauge and rubber tubing with a surface disinfectant. And finally, store it for next use. You are now ready to manually clean the scope. The first step in cleaning the scope starts with disassembling the parts from the scope. Remove and soak the sealing caps, valves, and adapters in enzymatic detergent. Rinse off any individual gross debris or pre-cleaning products from the scope. Place the scope into a sink or basin with the correct dilution of enzymatic detergent with processed water. The enzymatic detergent is most effective when the correct water temperature is used. If the water temperature is too hot, the enzymatic detergent will not work effectively. 
Use a low-pressure device or an automated irrigation pump like the one shown here to flush the enzymatic detergent through the channels. Use a 20cc syringe if there isn't a lower-pressure device available. Allow the scope to soak in the enzymatic solution for 5 minutes. Use this time to clean the adapters and sealing caps. There are a number of adapters, sealing caps, and specialty adapters that all must be effectively cleaned. This is accomplished by using the correct sized brush to clean each removable part. Be sure to rinse each part as well. Cleaning all of these removable parts is a vital step to effectively reprocessing flexible endoscopes. Now the endoscope has finished soaking and the scope's channels are ready for cleaning. The three steps to remember is always flush, brush, and flush again. These are so simple to do, but so important and really pretty effective when it comes to cleaning the inside of the channel. Clean each channel with a brush designed for this purpose. The ideal brush is disposable, has a tip that will not damage the inside of the channels, and has a handle that will not kink or bend during cleaning. The bristles should touch the walls of the channel without bending or folding during use. There should be a very slight resistance when advancing the brush through the channel. If using a reusable brush, make sure to clean and disinfect between uses and that it is in good working order. Push the brush through the channel and out the distal end of the endoscope. Do not reverse the brush until the tip is completely out through the distal end. Swish the end of the brush in the detergent and pull the brush completely back through the channel. Swish the brush in the detergent solution. Repeat this process until there is no visible debris on the brush. Brush all the channels with this same technique. You are now ready to clean the ports. Clean the ports by advancing a short cleaning brush until there is resistance at the bend of the port. Rotate the brush to clean the walls of the port. Now you're ready to rinse the endoscope. Place the endoscope into a clean basin or sink and rinse with processed or sterile water. It is common for facilities to provide processed water to the sink and machines in CSSD. Again, use a low pressure device or an automated irrigation pump like the one shown here to flush the channels after they've been properly cleaned. Rinse the outside of the scope with processed water. Do not use regular tap water as it may contain waterborne pathogens that can lead to biofilm formation in the channels and scope exterior. You have now completed the manual cleaning of the flexible endoscope. In addition, many facilities also utilize a machine to automate some of the endoscope reprocessing. Your hospital may have invested in an automatic reprocessing machine in order to clean endoscopes. A machine that helps with the, the cleaning as well as any steps of the reprocessing for an endoscope is clearly a, a step above doing a manual clean. but when you're using an automated machine, make sure that you do the first important steps of brushing, flushing, and rinsing the channel to make sure that the debris at least has been loosened before placing into an automatic uh, endoscope reprocessor. A machine like the Evotech shown here may perform a leak test. Always perform the leakage test during manual cleaning in addition to the machine's leakage test. Follow the machine's checklist for entering the data to ensure the correct process is scheduled for the correct instrument. The programmable features of the machine provide consistent, measurable process steps to clean and disinfect the endoscope. The machine also captures and records the process steps for effective quality review. Prepare the machine for receiving a flex endoscope. Connect the flexible endoscope to the automatic washer disinfector using a suitable rinsing tubing set. Check the connections and make sure the connections are firmly seated. Make sure all of the adapters and loose parts are secured in a bag for cleaning and easy retrieval after the machine is done with the cycle. After machine reprocessing, the endoscope is now ready for patient care, storage, or low temperature sterilization. Make sure all the ancillary pieces are with the scope. The endoscope will not be usable without them. Clearly, you can program a machine to do certain finite steps in the cleaning process. And so having both a, a manual pre-clean as well as now using an automated machine that is programmed to do steps each time the same way 
instilling the same detergents, the same chemicals, will definitely improve the quality of the reprocessing for an endoscope. Whether the flexible endoscope has been reprocessed manually or by a machine, all the parts must be accounted for and completely dry. Make sure the scope is in working order. Look for and replace any defective parts on the scope. Test the scope for functionality. Activate the distal deflection or bending section of the scope to make sure it bends in the intended direction. Inspect the distal tip to ensure the bending rubber and lens are in good working order. The endoscope cannot be used and must be returned for repair if there is damage to bending rubber, the actuating levers, or either the eyepiece or the lens on the distal tip. Check the light output in optics by connecting the scope to a light source. If no portable light source is available, hold the distal tip up to a light and view the light in the eyepiece. Send the scope for repair as soon as damage is discovered. Damage that is not repaired in a timely manner always leads to a bigger problem and a more expensive repair. It's critical to get uh, instruments that need repair to the repair shop quickly because the longer you go, the greater the risk to the patient that it may ultimately really fail. It could very much significantly increase the cost uh, if you delay the repairs. Ensure the scope's channels have been flushed with 70% alcohol to aid the drying process inside the channels. Dry the channels with low-pressure forced air. A 20cc syringe can also be used to force air through the channels. Dry the scope's exterior with a lint-free cloth. The scope is now ready for low-temperature sterilization or high-level disinfection. A person is hired with the responsibility of processing instruments, I believe the first thing they need to be taught or learn about is the Spalding classification. There's a gentleman at the CDC named Earl Spalding who classified instruments in three categories, critical, semi-critical, and non-critical. Nothing to do with how critical the procedure is. It has to do with how the instrument is used. If it's a critical device, it's a device that goes into a sterile part of the body or the vascular system, like a scalpel, like a mosquito, like a needle, that has to be sterile. A semi-critical device is a device that does not penetrate a mucous membrane, but it contacts a mucous membrane. Unlike the critical device, which penetrates the mucous membrane, the semi-critical device does not. That would be something like a thermometer, a bronchoscope, perhaps, or a laryngoscope blade. And those devices, as a minimum, have to be high-level disinfected. So the first thing the instrument processor knows is, what, how is this device used? Once I know how the device is used, I know how to process it. I know whether I need to high-level disinfect it or sterilize it. Richard Wolff flexible endoscopes are used in the kidney, bladder, larynx, and lungs for diagnostic and operative procedures. Always carefully consider the Spalding classification system when determining how to process these flexible endoscopes and their accompanying instruments. I think the gold standard is terminal sterilization. So all of these scopes, or any device that's a critical device, I believe should be terminally sterilized. And that means it's put in a package that is sterilized, and that package can then be stored on the shelf until uh, it's needed. That, to me, is the gold standard. Both rigid scopes and flexible scopes need to be handled carefully because they are delicate. They're readily broken if they're not handled appropriately. The rigid scopes have been out on the market for years now. People are familiar with them. There's been a lot of education. But these flexible scopes, these long, narrow lumens that can do things that we couldn't dream of even a few years ago, these really are much more delicate. And I think they need a lot more education so that we can get to the level of caring for these like we can as we have for rigid scopes. For the facility that chooses to use high-level disinfection, it's important to follow the disinfectant manufacturer's instruction for proper use and efficacy testing. First, perform the daily quality test for the liquid disinfectant. Next, make sure the scope is completely submerged in the high-level disinfectant for the prescribed exposure time. Use a syringe to pull the disinfectant through the channels to ensure the chemical contacts all of the channel surfaces. Finally, Place a lid on the disinfectant container during the time the scope is in the disinfectant solution. If the scope is to be used immediately on another patient, flush the channels with sterile water. Otherwise, if the scope is going to be placed in clean storage for later use, use either processed or sterile water to rinse the scope. 
Again, you must flush the channels with 70% alcohol to aid in drying the channels. Dry the channels by using a low pressurized air device. A 20cc or larger syringe can also be used to dry the channels. You can also dry the scope by using a drying cabinet if it is available. Always hang the scope vertically in the drying cabinet to ensure the channels will drain during drying. When you hang a scope up and you, you're going to just store it until you use it the next time, you want to make sure that while it's in storage that it's dry because moisture in lumens is one of the precursors to formation of biofilms. Biofilms can really, really uh, cause a significant infection in a patient. Very, very important step in instrument processing of scopes. We are very concerned about microbial regrowth after the scope has been uh, disinfected. Um, Pseudomonas aeruginosa is a microorganism that loves to grow uh, wherever there's any moisture. And uh, so we have to make sure that all of the protocols with the alcohol flush and with flushing with the air uh, at the end of the cleaning process is performed. We also have to make sure that the scopes are hung vertically in a well-ventilated cabinet. And according to the Centers for Disease Control, they would like those scopes identified with a label stating that they were cleaned and high-level disinfected. When caring for Richard Wolf flexible endoscopes, remember to provide staff education regarding proper care and handling of the flexible endoscope. Always pre-clean the endoscope at the point of use. Always perform a leakage test before cleaning. Always manually clean before using an automated reprocessing machine. Ensure all cleaning steps have been completed as described in the manufacturer's IFU. Use 70% alcohol and filtered air to dry the endoscope's channels before disinfection, sterilization, or storage. Ensure the gas cap is attached to the endoscope before sterilizing using EO, Sterad, or VPRO sterilization. Always report scopes needing to be repaired as soon as the damage is detected. Never use ultrasonic machines to clean these scopes. Never subject these scopes to excessive heat. Never attach the gas cap to the scope during cleaning, disinfection with liquid chemicals, or patient care. Always refer to the device-specific instructions for use manual when using and reprocessing the flexible endoscope. Contact your Richard Wolf sales representative or customer service for additional information on care and handling of flexible endoscopes.